guys, welcome back to the Hobby Farm Homestead. Uh, we're out here at the camper, and I gotta show you something, guys. This is unbelievable what has happened to this camper. Uh, it's only five years old, a little over five on this camper, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you now, and it's, I mean, it makes me sick to my stomach. See that down in there? That is total water damage underneath this outdoor kitchen. And I'm not sure exactly where it's coming from. Like I said, this thing is kept in under roof all winter. I don't use it very often. The little bit of damage that's right here, I thought maybe I left this um, door open one night and it got a little bit too much moisture on it. But it is from something. Um, also maybe thought that some of these screw heads were letting water in. But if you can see, there's water on the inside of this uh, weather stripping. And I have no idea how it is getting in here. And it'd be unbelievable if that is the direct cause to this much damage. I mean, that wood is gone. That piece of wood right there is the two by four that runs right here that supports back side of this camper it's gone I mean it's it is completely gone that's crazy guys I mean I've never seen anything like that in my entire life maybe on a 10 or 12 or 13 year old camper that no one takes care of and the roof springs to the leaf and you, you get that kind of damage um, like I said I bought this in 2015 in March so it's almost six years still like I said I take care of this camper I monitor all the caulking that's on the roof I pressure wash the roof every year, make sure it's good. The roof isn't leaking. There's no bad parts in the roof. So what we're gonna do today is probably part one of this video. So we're gonna cut into this to see where this is coming from. Maybe there's a pipe under there that's got a small leak every time the water is on. Maybe it's spraying water. I mean, it has to be something like that, in my opinion, to have that kind of extensive damage. Because that goes out around and underneath the bunkhouse, there's, it's even damaged over there. It's crazy, and I just realized the extent of it. Like I said, I just thought that I had that kind of damage from just having this door open, maybe forgetting to shut it when it rained one night or something like that. Not that kind, not that kind of damage. So let's go ahead and get in cutting this part and looking at it because the company that built the camper and the person I bought it from, or the company I bought it from, after one year, you're on your own. It, uh, I even have an extended warranty on this thing, um, but it only covers like your axles and just your major components. It won't cover anything like this. So of course, I gotta fix it myself. So we're gonna try to do that. But if I cannot find where it's leaking, I'm gonna have the same issue over and over and over. But we're gonna, we're gonna try. So let's go ahead and get into it. First thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take out this outside grill. Well, it's a stove top actually I've got to figure out how this comes apart I'm pretty sure sure if you just maybe push in on that and this will slide all the way out um, so I'm gonna go ahead and figure that out and get this out of my way and then I'll get this track off and then I got one of those zip saws we'll just cut it right here at the top and pull all that out so I can cut the rest of this linoleum out so let's see if we can get this figured out All right, that wasn't too hard. So let's get this track taken apart.
let's see some sort of beam or support right there but you look look at it's just it's gone a couple screws there not much there holding that corner that's solid wood there but nothing here so I don't really know All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of this apart here. And so I can just get this cut up and see where we're at. Looks like there might be halfway decent wood right there. So I'm going to cut this across the top. See what I got over here because it's pretty bad over here in the corner. And then try to find some good wood over there. I mean that, that wood is damaged all the way up underneath there. So I must have a, I must have a leak up that way. So I'm just going to keep exploring. Let me get the flashlight and see what I can find. I think is what's causing it to all rot. Yep. All right. Well, I'm gonna have to cut back on this board, probably about right here. Cut that back. And then I'm gonna have to cut. See this just on the side of this this wall right here is the bunkhouse it's about three inches wide and from about here back on the bunkhouse has gotten <clears throat> damaged um, the only thing i can think of is this water coming in right in here there's a screw there's a screw there 
there's a screw there. Now I put silicone on it. Prior to me putting silicone on it, there was never anything on it. And there's a screw right here and one right here. Now each, where there's a screw, when it rains hard, there is a, a, a trickle of water on each screw, so it's four of them. And I, when I say trickle, I mean it's running water. So somehow it is getting behind this seal and getting into that screw because I have silicone on it and it is still getting wet. So I bought a new seal here and I'm gonna take these screws out and silicone those holes up tight. Um, and maybe put new screws in and make sure that everything is sealed. So I got like, it's called an expanded or expandable seal. So it'll expand out to an inch. Then you can compress it down when you shut it. And then when you take it back out, it'll come back out. So it just goes back. This stuff is flat and it's, it's not coming back. Like it has no retraction to it. So this is a, it's called an expandable foam weather seal and it'll expand out to an inch but it'll also collapse once you you know close the door on it so hopefully that'll take care of this because i'm not running there's no water coming from any pipes i can see all the pipe fittings there's nothing leaking um the only thing is is my pump's not shutting off so there could be a leak somewhere and or there couldn't be it, it could be the um there's like a pressure tank and switch that, that might be burned out who knows but like the center core of this water was right here everything was right here so there's a screw there a screw here that's where and it it's like it's almost expanded out from there that way depend on how it's sitting so if this thing sat out for four months in the heavy weather that's when it got a majority of its damage and got that insulation wet and it just held the moisture and it, that's why the material because you can tell it got wet and then it dried you know what i mean because it sits under roof all winter so i'm going to go ahead and cut a little bit more of this bad wood out and then i'm going to go get some looks like maybe one by threes and get this all put back together and then work on the seal of this door to where i don't have any water going in there once I know that, I'll put a new floor down as far as I just I'm just going to put like a Pergo floor down because I have I have it on hand. So let's go ahead and cut a little bit more out of this and then see if we can start piecing this thing back together. All right, guys, this is day number two working on the camper. Um, I got everything cut out that I think I need to get cut out at that. There's a little bit of wetness over there. But when I do, just like I said, beyond this wall is the bunkhouse. So when I do the bunkhouse, I will pull the carpet up and then replace this back half. But I'm going to, what I'm going to do is shove a, a board that sits on, there's a steel frame right here, through far enough to where I can scab onto that so I can get good support off of that. So I'll put a board in here. I'll scab on to this one, scab on to that one, and then up under here, there's still it's still kind of wet, but there's enough there to scab. You can kind of see it, but I'll I'll go up in here and scab it, and then that way I'll have something underneath here to hold this. But this is where it was leaking back in here through these screw holes because the seals back here. That's where they should have did the screws. It was right there or behind. They should have never put these holes in right here. They should have had the holes back here behind the seal. And then it would never. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the, the, the screws back here to hold it in. And I'm going to seal these holes up with silicone. Then put a new seal in. And hopefully that does the job. So let's get at getting this thing back together.
continue to grab hold of. So I want to put one more piece off of this going back underneath there to help support that a little bit for right now um, and then I'll put uh, this piece in and that piece hopefully I have enough wood I should uh, let's go ahead and get that done okay see that one is in there and it's tied in right here I'll screw all that together um, you know I'll put a block here in the corner so I can screw it that way and screw it back in this way. So that should work there. Everything's going to be twice as tight. So let's go ahead and get that scabbed in, see where we end up with that. in there all new wood up underneath there it's all tight now I'll measure out for the plywood so I think I'll put another just a kicker right here so that plywood can sit on it um, I am gonna get the plywood up underneath here it gets tighter down here there's a huge space up here that is because this door frame is in crooked there's no other way to say it. anything I mean it's crooked period because you can kind of see that right there. See how that's lower than that side? But it uh, doesn't matter. Once I get it all done, it's going to be nice and straight. So I'm going to put another kicker on here, and I'll get the piece of plywood cut. I might have to do it in pieces because it's so tight in there. I'll probably do one piece here and one piece over there. So let's go ahead and uh, get that kicker screwed on. All right, I got this side in. That was kind of a nasty piece to put in, but I have to split these in order to get it in 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 here. I can't put it all in one piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this piece in right here. Take quite a bit off this. Okay, so it's a lot higher than what it used to be. Probably by a quarter of an inch. And this will go up a little bit, but not that much. I mean, it's probably it'll clear there. For some odd reason, I'll have to taper this down. But uh, I got a little staple gun. I'm gonna go ahead and staple this sheeting down. Um, I don't think I have enough screws so I'm gonna go ahead and get my little staple gun 
and I think I'll do a staple. Maybe I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. Probably drill some holes here and screw this door down like it should be anyhow. So, all right, I'm gonna go get that gun. All right, this is a Metabo Narrow Crown. It's great for uh, doing finished trim plywood. part's done now the only reason why I didn't put insulation back underneath here it's outdoor kitchen for one thing and the insulation is uh, basically the travel line for the water so it'll soak it up and just keep you know just like a sponge it'll soak it all the way to different areas so that'll at least be a somewhat of a barrier in case this door does leak again that it won't go further into the camper so, you know, I can see the comments now. You didn't put insulation back down there. Well, my theory is I don't want that insulation to soak up all the water again. Um, the vapor barrier is on the bottom still. It's intact. There's no holes. Uh, so no water will come up from the bottom. Uh, other than that, I mean, I'm going to put on these couple trim pieces. And uh, I might put a piece of pergo flooring here just to decorate this outside. Because you'll never see any of this stuff in here. So that's probably what I'll do is I'll just slide a piece of pergo floor and staple down from the outside where you can't even see it and uh, it'll look just fine. Okay, that is all in there, all new. I'm just gonna nail this backer board down and then trim nail to the front and then put in the stove, put that backer in and it's done. So let's go ahead and get that done. change anything as far as that goes.
Let's do it again, Jukebox. Alright guys, <clears throat> we got it fixed. Um, it's night the seal around the door is really tight, so I hope uh, it uh, takes care of the water. It won't allow it in. Before I used to be able to move this corner right here in and out. It's nice and tight. Comes open like it's stuck to the thing there. But everything is good. Turn this light on. Now this right here, I will seal up, not seal, but stain to match that. I think that's American Heritage stain. What? Just like new. So if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, this was kind of a thing that I needed to get it done. The dealership was not going to do it for me. Well, they would for about $150 an hour, and I'm not paying that. Um, it took me about a day and a half to do and I got about 15 to 20 dollars in material that it took me to fix a lot of the stuff I had laying around plywood especially but it's fixed for now now I gotta just monitor to see if any water gets in on this right here I put a tap con right there hold this frame in so and the silicone is over those that's it Seals nice and tight, tight enough where you got to push in on it. So just have to watch that seal right there in the corner, because if it doesn't come back out, it will leak. But this is like an expandable seal, so it should come out. So. Like I said, guys, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. It's something different, you know, other than the animals and stuff on the uh, hobby farm here. But uh, it's something that needs to be done. And I know I could do it. It's just working on a camper is kind of stressful and it's kind of its own unique thing. Um, it's not like building a house or anything like that. Um, you know, because when they build a camper, it's on layers. You know, they start with the subfloor, then they put the walls over top of the linoleum. Everything is on top of each other. So when you go to cut it apart, it just doesn't work out as easy as, you know, just cutting something straight through. You have to watch what you do. But that's it. Uh, should be fixed. I just got to monitor the seal. If that seal doesn't work, I'll have to look into something better. Uh, maybe getting an original seal for it. It's like $300 for that, just to seal around that from the camping place. I'm, just, I'm, I'm not going to pay that. that. The other one was $10, the one I put on here. So I'll just, uh, I'll just keep an eye on it. That's all I got to do. So... That's it guys, I'll catch you guys on the next one.